If, as the old saying suggests, practice really does make perfect, then this new Honda Civic should be as close to perfect as cars get. Honda has been making the Civic for no less than 50 years this year, and this latest version marks the 11th generation. And when you've done something that many times and for that much time, then chances are you're gonna get pretty good at it. Styling-wise, it's more evolution than revolution, with the front end in particular being very reminiscent of the car it replaces, albeit a bit cleaner and less fussy. The back end has a wee bit more individuality about it, with the rear light clusters being connected by a light bar that runs the width of the hatchback boot lid. Lift up that boot lid and you will find a space that totals around 410 litres, and that news is both good and bad. On the plus side, it's a shade more than you get in rivals like the Volkswagen Golf and Ford Focus, but compared with the previous Civic, it's actually a good bit smaller. Maybe a bit of a backward step for practicality then, but there is a good reason for it, which we'll come to in a minute. The good news for rear passengers is that the car's wheelbase, in other words, the distance between the front wheels and the rear wheels, is bigger than it was in the old Civic, which should mean more legroom. And sure enough, I'm six foot one and even my gangly pins fit easily. Headroom is quite a bit tighter though, so if your passengers are much taller than me, things will feel a little bit cramped. What's also worth noting is the amount of natural light you get back here. The previous Civic had really small back windows which made the rear seats a bit dark and dingy and on that score, this Civic is much better. Up front you get loads of space and lots of adjustment for your driving position so it is easy to get comfortable. It's also quite a classy feeling environment in here because all the materials look fairly posh and the build quality is really sturdy. Stylistically, this honeycomb metallic strip that runs across the dash where the air vents are housed is a really simple but interesting touch and you have these little joystick-like controls to direct the airflow. And on the subject of airflow, look at this. Hallelujah! Physical aircon controls instead of a sub-menu on the touchscreen system. And they couldn't be easier to use. And talking of the infotainment system, big improvements have been made there too. The previous Civic's infotainment system was by far and away its biggest Achilles heel with slow responses, dated graphics and complicated menus. The latest Civic, however, has been given the same system found in the latest Jazz and HRV, and it's way better, easier to use, more responsive, better to look at. Plus, all versions get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. Now, before we get on the road, there's one more thing we need to talk about. And that thing is what lies under here. Perhaps the biggest news about the new Civic is that it is only available as a hybrid. You've got a two litre direct injection Atkinson cycle petrol engine along with two electric motors to deliver a combined power output of 180 brake horsepower. That hybrid system is the reason why the boot is smaller than before because all the extra mechanical bits and bobs have to live somewhere. It's what you might call a self-charging hybrid, so you don't plug it in, it recharges itself using energy recycled through braking and deceleration. It can't run for all that long on electric power alone as a result, but nevertheless, the average economy figure of 60.1 miles per gallon is not to be sniffed at. So, how does it work? Well, the hybrid system has a variety of modes which it switches between automatically with no input from the driver. At low speeds, it defaults where the battery allows to EV mode, which is fairly self-explanatory. And when slightly stronger acceleration is needed, it then switches to hybrid mode where the wheels are driven by the electric motor, but the electricity is provided by the petrol engine. When you're driving at higher constant speeds, then the system switches to engine drive mode, which is where the wheels are powered by the engine directly. But the car is also capable of unfurling both power sources, both together when maximum acceleration is needed. That's all fine in theory, but let's see how it works 
in reality. And the answer is absolutely fine. If that generous power output figure is making you expect fireball performance, then you might be a bit disappointed with a 0 to 62 time of 7.8 seconds. But way more importantly than that, the pickup is nice and eager from pretty much anywhere on the rev range. So the drivetrain doesn't feel in any way strained when getting you up to speed. And that keeps your life nice and easy and relaxed. The Civic's transmission is what Honda calls an eCVT. And if that moniker is filling you with the terror that any slight request for acceleration is gonna be met with soaring engine revs and deafening noise levels, then seriously, don't worry. We'll spare you the technicalities, but the fact is that this doesn't operate like a traditional CVT does. And in reality, it actually behaves much more like a conventional automatic gearbox. The switches between the various hybrid modes, they are perceptible, but they always happen smoothly and unobtrusively, and that contributes to an overall level of very impressive refinement. And that's the overriding theme with this car. It just doesn't feel very hybrid-y. You're not waiting for that aspect of the drivetrain to respond. It doesn't feel too heavy. It doesn't feel overloaded on the brakes. It just goes about its business in a really polished and sophisticated way. As well as the various hybrid modes, you can also toggle between four driving modes, eco, normal, sport, and individual. However, these only vary the throttle response and the steering response, and the variation is quite subtle, so most people probably won't even notice the difference. But regardless of mode, the Civic is actually a really sweet thing to drive. We're in Madrid for the car's international launch, and it's got to be said that the roads in this part of Spain are in much better nick than most of the battered byways you find in the UK. But with that caveat in place, we've got to say that the ride does seem to be really, really slick. The bump absorption is good and the control is really impressive. And that control also helps to make the car feel quite agile, probably not to the extent that a Ford Focus or BMW 1 Series do, but it feels nice and precise, it's grippy, it's alert, and the steering is nice and quick, it's really responsive, and it's really nicely weighted. So, what is the verdict overall? Well, the Civic might have taken a little bit of a step backwards on practicality due to smaller boot and limited rear headroom. But the fact is, it has taken big strides forward in a variety of other areas, most notably cabin quality, infotainment, ergonomics, and efficiency. The hybrid system works really well. It's a really satisfying car to drive generally, and it's absolutely packed with luxury and safety kit, 11 airbags, no less. Yes, it enters a very competitive part of the car market, but nevertheless, it's still a very competitive offering. Well done, Honda. We'd love to know what you think of the new Honda Civic, so do please tell us in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel. And for a great deal on your next car from a top-rated dealer, head over to cargurus.co.uk.